Okay, welcome to session 10, part C. Um, okay, I just talked about arbitrage in the and then part A, I talked about the piano example or the difference between economic profit and accounting profit. So now I want to put them together and s explain why economists often assume or assert that in, um, in equilibrium in any industry, the economic profits, not the accounting profits, the economic profits should be driven down to zero. It's the same reason that we should not expect arbitrage opportunities to exist. You know, maybe they can exist for a fleeting moment, but we should exist. Expect entrepreneurs, speculators, others to to uh, to drive those opportunities away. Okay, to make them disappear. Okay, so um, here's one way to explain that. Um, um, so if we go back to the piano teaching example. So, um, so as we have a case in some town to do piano lessons, say lots of different uh, piano lesson businesses face these these same revenues and costs that you can get um, revenue of five thousand dollars per month. Uh, meanwhile, it costs to to rent a studio or office to have the lessons is two thousand a month, and then to pay. A piano teacher, it costs twenty five hundred dollars per month. Um, the idea, so in this case, we would say that the economic profit is five thousand minus two thousand minus twenty five hundred equals five hundred dollars. There's an economic profit in this case. What would happen? Well, in general, um, typical standard economic thinking is that it's like an arbitrage opportunity. Another person can open up a business and basically it's it's like for free get an extra five hundred dollars per month as profit someone could open up such a business and we believe that once people start doing that they will drive down the price of piano lessons such that before you're getting five thousand dollars in revenue you put a few more piano lesson businesses in this town, it's going to drive down the, the price of piano lessons a little bit less, and eventually enough people enter the businesses, that revenue is going to drop down to the $4,500 that the costs are. People are going to continue entering the business until that revenue drops to that. Once it drops below that, people will say, no, now I'm going to get out of the business. So it, it, the only possible steady state equilibrium would be 4500 So I said other businesses could enter. Not only that, another way to think about this is that um, uh, in this hypothetical example, say we, I'm the, the owner of this business and I've paid a teacher $2,500 in wages. Well, alternatively, that, that teacher might want to quit and become an entrepreneur. That teacher could say, look, uh, to open up a business, a piano lessons business, all you got to do is pay $2,000 in rent. You can get 5000 in revenue. I could get an accounting profit of 3000 That's higher than my $2,500 wage. I'd be better off starting such a business. So enough piano teachers start thinking this way. They also would be one of the ones who could enter the business and become a new entrepreneur, a new owner of such a business. And once again, once we believe the standard economic thing is that once enough people enter it, the, the economic profits will be driven down to zero. This is basically, this is competition. Okay. Um, now, um, uh, okay. Now, the, the the authors of your textbook, though, caution against such that type of thinking. Okay, so what I just described was what you might see in a standard economics textbook. Uh, your authors, excuse me, have a have a different view. Okay, here's the idea that I think the authors of your textbook would say that um, that profits in an industry are something like 
an example, if you had a bottle of honey, and so here I have a, this clipboard. Suppose this is a table, okay? Imagine this is a table. I have a bottle of honey, one of these squirt bottles, and I start squirting the honey onto the table, okay? The honey starts off with a mound. It, it looks like a little pyramid-type shape, okay? If I squirt it fast enough, okay? Those are like economic profits. They can exist for a short time, okay? But eventually, if I stop squirting the bottle, that mound is going to fall down and it's going to flatten out to the table, okay? That's the way a lot of people, a lot of economists look at these profits. That yeah, in the short term, there is can be an arbitrage situation. Yeah, there can be economic profits for the short term, but eventually they wither away and it's like honey getting to the level of the table, okay? Uh, they exist in the short term, but the steady state is that no, they don't exist. Everything is, is flat and level. I, I think the authors of your textbook would say, would in a sense agree with that, but they would say, look, but there's so many um, opportunities for innovation that it's as if that honey bottle is infinitely big, that these sources of innovation keep coming and coming and coming. So even though you may have industry A, that the, the innovations run out and the profits eventually go to zero, before that happens, there will be some innovation in industry B that will have these profits. And before the innovations in A completely run down, there will be innovations in B that give economic profits. And before the innovations, before the innovations in B run out so that there's no profits in B, there'll be a C where there, and there's always a, an industry where there's economic profits. So the authors of your textbook would say, no, it's, yeah, it's like a, a jar of honey, but the jar of honey, or we have an infinite number of bottles. That once one runs out, we've got another bottle of honey. Those are innovations that keep coming and coming. And so if you have a constant stream of honey, that is coming down onto the table, there will always be a mound. So even though if we look at one particular drop of honey, that will eventually get to the level of the table. But if there's an infinite number of new drops coming, we'll, we'll always see a little mound. I think that would be the, a way to reconcile the, uh, the, view, the way your, the authors of your textbook see it versus the way... Um, kind of the standard economic thinking is, okay? So they would say that your, the, the authors of your textbook say that we do, we would see positive profits greater than zero in, in the typical industry, whereas standard economic thinking would say, no, no, we should. Um, okay, so that is um, the point about economic profits, whether they in equilibrium should be zero or not. Um, okay, hopefully you understand that. And so that is part C, I'll end there and do one more topic in part D. See you there.